Hello, everyone. So glad to have you here today. This is our Friday Forum. It's actually the last week of the month. My name is Cindy McDonald. I am your hostess for the Friday Forums. And it's my privilege to be able to bring in people who are experts in their fields to bring that expertise and just to have conversations with us about what we are doing, how you can expand your organization or your business, and just things, topics that are important to us. So as you're joining me today, please put in the chat your name and also your location so that Karen can see where you're at and Carmen can see where you're at and I can see where you're at. And we're really, and then you can see where everybody is. We are expecting a really big crowd today. I'm very excited to be able to have my guest here today, Karen Yankovich. I've been working with her and learning more about LinkedIn. So I felt like you would want to know about this as well. Karen is a, um, a LinkedIn marketing specialist. She's also the author of the Good Girls, Good Girls Get Rich podcast. Let me say that three times, which I've listened to probably for over a year, Karen, and love the different um, topics you cover and the different people that you're able to interview on your podcast. And Karen's specialty is high ticket relationships through LinkedIn. So Karen, as you can see, we've got Tara, Karen, <clears throat> we've got people from Monterey, um, Colorado, just all over the world, North Carolina. So glad to see you all here. And um, Fremont, California, Maryland, just all over. So as you're joining us today, go ahead and add to the chat where you're from. And, and then the other thing, once you've added where you're from, on a scale of one to five, tell us what your skill is with LinkedIn. One being like, what is LinkedIn? Five being, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I use it all the time and I know exactly what I'm doing. So tell us where you are. So it looks like we've got some twos, threes. Oh, I see a fours. few fives. I love the five. Yeah. Yeah. Belinda is very um, uh, familiar with LinkedIn. And um, so, oh, yes. Hi, Susan. We're glad. I'm just so glad to see all of you here. So um, and we have Carmen. Carmen, turn your camera back on so everybody can see you. Everybody's got wondering, when do you leave for college? When are you leaving us? When do you go to Stevens? We can't hear you yet. August 23rd. August 23rd. Oh, good. So we're going we're gonna to have you for a little bit in August. I wasn't sure when that was going to happen. So, so we all are very excited for you. And you're just going to have to, we're just, I'm just going to have to have you do a Friday forum just on your own when you get there and let us know what your thoughts were, Everything goes. what your experience has been. Okay. So yes. Carmen, Carmen is going to manage. She'll be checking your chats. Remember, as we're going through today's Friday forum, you can also put the questions in the question and answer. That helps us. And that way, if we don't get time, Karen can answer it later or I or I can send, um, send it later as well. So if you can put question answers, your actual questions in the question answer chat um, section and use the chat for just the chatting, that'll be really good. All right, so Karen, I mean, Karen is asking you, Carmen, tell them where you're going. I'm going to Stevens Institute of Technology, so it is in Hoboken. Yeah, yeah. So those of you that have um, experience, I've, I've been to Stevens Institute. I am not familiar with Hoboken though. Um, so if you guys have some experience that you wanna share with Carmen, please do that. So I, mean, I am a Hoboken connoisseur. So you just reach out if you have any questions. My son actually used to work for the mayor of Hoboken. So um, okay. yeah, I've had family lived in Hoboken. It's such a great area. You're gonna is it your first year? Yeah. You're, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it if you don't already. It's great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We're so we're so excited for you. Um so today, Karen, I'm so glad you're able to join us and 
Tell us a little bit about your background and how you became a LinkedIn strategist. Yeah, so it's interesting. I didn't obviously set out to be a LinkedIn strategist. As you might notice, I'm a little older than LinkedIn. Um, My background has been in sales and marketing. And um, on the IT side, though, I was like technology, phone systems, voice technology, voice networks, that kind of thing. And you know, over the years, you know, as life evolved, my, you know, as my personal life evolved, my business life evolved. And, um, you know, about 10 or 15 years ago, I started taking some classes in online marketing, um, just mainly, mainly for fun. My kids were growing up and I had a little extra time and, you know, it was kind of a, a sweet spot for me. I love talking to people. Like, even though I've done sales my whole life, it's always been, I've always been really good at the relationship sales stuff, like really building relationships, getting to the heart of it. Um, and I, what I found was that a couple things. So since my background is IT, I was very often like, think about the 90s, the only woman in the room often in IT. So I had to exude confidence or get my lunch eaten. And, you know, the, 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 what, I, what I like to say is like, I, you know, if I say, I might say I know what I'm talking about, and, but I know inside when I don't, and then I'll go research it, right? So I had to... I had to really be confident and I didn't realize what a great skill that was to learn to, to just portray confidence in what you do. So when I started to take classes in online marketing and I started to help people with it, people started coming to me saying, how did you know how to do this? Right. And I don't know. It just, it just, it just came naturally to me. But what I found was even though I was helping people with their digital marketing in general, I was driving people to LinkedIn because what I, what I realized very early on was that, um, you know, back when I was doing sales in the nineties, nobody really cared about like what you had for dinner or anything like that. Right. Or, you know, but we, we would talk to people all the time and wonder what they actually really looked like. Right. Or what they actually were like, you didn't really know them. And then you see a picture of them and you try and associate it with the face, right. Those days were over. People were doing business with other people. They wanted to know more about the people they were doing business with. So even though I was helping them with their digital marketing presence in general, I was driving them to LinkedIn saying, we got to get this tightened up first because we need people want to know more about you. They're buying from you, right? Even like, even though you make, you might make the best pens in the world, right? In the world. But at the end of the day, people are, you know, people buy from you. So, so I found myself driving people to LinkedIn to the point where then people started asking me to speak about LinkedIn. And I started to shift my business. And the other thing I learned about digital marketing, and, and this is certainly true for everyone watching this. I, I learned early on that when I was a social media speaker, for example, somebody would say, I need a speaker for social media and 300 names would get thrown out. Somebody would say, I need a LinkedIn speaker and 10 people would say, call Karen. So I realized that the more I niched my business, the more valuable it was. And let's get real. I didn't have to remember everything that was going on in all the platforms. It was actually easier for me because all I had to do was focus on what one, what was happening on one platform. And I was becoming more of a specialist. And the more that more of a specialist you are, but frankly, the, the bigger your income, right? Think about like, you could be a doctor and you're making a hundred dollars, right? Or you could be a, you could be a surgeon and you're making a thousand dollars. And then when you're a heart surgeon, you're making $10,000 and you're a less left ventricle specialist, you're making a hundred thousand dollars, right? So, so, so keep that. So keeping that in mind, I started to help my clients create those brands of themselves on LinkedIn, right? So you could, so, so that kind of, eventually I shifted all of my business to LinkedIn. And I, and I learned, trust me the hard way that every time I had shiny object syndrome, my bank account balance reflected it. Right. So I was like, all right, no more shiny object syndrome. I'm just going to stay in my lane. So when I stay in my lane, there's abundance for all. Right. So that's kind of how I ended up here. And honestly, I've niched even further to really, I mean, I'd support anybody, but I do have a program that's specifically designed to support women because I think that shining a light on ourselves is something that we're not as, as good at. And, you know, I don't, again, niching down, there really isn't anybody else doing that. There really isn't anybody else that focuses on LinkedIn for women. So, um, so that's kind of where I, where I am today, who knows where I'll be tomorrow, but I, I feel really good about this. And, you know, um, listen, post, like post pandemic, this was a good place to be teaching virtual networking as a specialty was a good thing, good place to be in the last two years. So um, I think it's really been a, it's really been helpful to a lot of people. Oh, I totally agree. I, I, 
And going back to your comment about being a female in technology, as a technology person, I helped found a technology company and I was always the only woman. And, yeah. and you do, you have to develop like kind of this forceful personality in order yeah. to just you know, maintain and, and keep it's a seat true. at the table sometimes, right? And you, and you had to, you had to. I remember specifically being in a room one time with a bunch of guys in tool belts and talking about servers and things. And I knew I knew as much, if not more than most of them in the room. But I walk in the room, I have these gorgeous pastel pumps on, pink ca- pink khakis. Like I totally did not look like I had a tool belt in my, you know, anywhere in my thing. And like, I just stopped, I just stopped. I'm like, let them all talk. And then I was just like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. And I started talking and I, I swear their mouths all dropped. Like they just didn't expect, they thought I was going with the key to let them in the server room. You know what I mean? Like, right, so, right. so, but you had to do it, you had to do it. Yeah. And that that's very key. And I think that's, you know, what you've said about drilling down and finding a niche as something that we as educational counselors or advisors is we're always struggling with is like, should I be, am I leaving money on the table if I'm not covering this group or trying to expand my services so you have found that actually the opposite is true by being able to, to narrow it down. That's helped you be able to increase your revenue, increase your, yeah. your business. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you an example. Like let's just think about realtors, right? I mean, everybody that's watching probably knows 10 realtors in every town that they've ever lived in. Right. Um, somebody comes to you and says, listen, my kids move into town. I need a realtor. Like, who are you going to choose? There's 10 of them. But if you know one of those 10 specializes on helping millennials buy their first house, you're going to say, you know what? I know a bunch of people, but start with Mary because Mary is going to be the one that can help your kid, right? So it, it helps you stand out from the crowd. And that doesn't mean Mary can't help people move into a retirement community, but it, but it, but it means that people are going to think of her over everybody else when, they're, when the opportunity arises. So it actually gives you more opportunity instead of less. And it I feels counterintuitive. I get that, but it 100% makes a difference. So let's go back to why you chose LinkedIn and, you know, you were doing all this social media and then you choose LinkedIn as the one to focus on, um, in terms of relationships. So what, what drove you to pick LinkedIn as the one to work on first? Because I, because what I was seeing was that people's personal brands were becoming more and more important. And it's not that you're not going to get the sale if you don't have a great LinkedIn profile, but if you do have, I mean, first of all, we Google everything. We don't buy a paperclip without looking for reviews for it, right? So, so, so people are going to check you out. I mean, check out your LinkedIn profile. It'll tell you in your dashboard, there's a dash, everyone has a dashboard and I'll tell you in the dashboard how many times your profile has been viewed this month, right? So people are seeing it because they're checking you out. They are, whether you want to believe it or not, you can keep your eyes closed to your LinkedIn profile. Other people are seeing it. Um, so you know, I feel like people were, you're leaving money on the table because, you know, I have a lot of analogies, you guys. So like, let's just move to a new town and there's two dry cleaners in town and one, the door's falling off the hinges and it's dirty and it looks like it hasn't been swept in a year. And the other one has beautiful flowers out front and they have a little bowl of water for the dog and very, very welcoming. You have no idea who the better dry cleaner is, but my guess is you're going to walk into the welcoming one. And that's what I mean for you. People are checking you out. If you don't do your job to create a great LinkedIn profile for yourself, you're leaving, your, your competitors are getting some of this business. I promise you that you have lost at least one deal if you haven't done this so far. So I, I kept seeing that happening over and over. So I was like, we have to, we have control of this. We have control of what comes up when people throw our name in a Google search. So I want to help you not lose that opportunity. So what are the three things that we should know about Lincoln? You've mentioned, you know, one of them. What are some other things that, that we should know about LinkedIn? So, you know, it's interesting. I can sit here and give you all these to-dos, right? But if I give you to-dos, or you're probably, they probably update your LinkedIn profile. It's probably been on your to-do list for six months anyway, right? So yep. just kind of stay on your, it'll just stay on your to-do list. I really want you to understand the power of it. And, you know, I had a conversation recently with, um, I think it was the director of marketing, I forget the guy's title, at LinkedIn. And we were talking about the fact that everybody thinks it's, it's really about your resume, it's an online resume, but it's not. And the first thing I tell people when I talk to them is we need to shift the energy of your profile from resume to brand. It is your personal brand. It is what makes you different than other people. Nobody cares 
whether you know Word or Excel or, you know, they don't care about any of that stuff. They care about what you can do for them. So being, so creating this almost like, you know, like they've even changed the summary section, but now it's now called the about section. Mm -hmm. Summary is clinical and boring. About is interesting and psychologically intriguing, right? So, so shifting your energy and making this about the brand of you and really kind of, if you have that niche, really leaning into that. Um, is going to make you stand out. And that's, that's like the first thing is shifting the energy. The other thing I touched on a little bit, and that is that nobody really cares about you, right? Nobody cares that you're the CEO. Nobody's Googling a CEO. Nobody cares what you, you know, you, I want you to present yourself as confident. I want you to talk about your achievements. I want you to do it in a way that you're like, can I really say that about myself? Like, I really want you to be, to go over the top with that. But at the end of the day, tell me why I care right? Like you can be a financial planner with a million letters after your name and be the best financial planner on the planet. And you can be a financial planner that helps women over 50 create enough wealth to retire at 60, right? So you're that same financial planner, but you've just, you've just stood out from all the other ones and you've made it about me. You're telling me about you, but you're making it about me. So, so those are like, so energetically, energetic shifts are more important than all of the to-dos, just shifting the energy to hooking people, what makes you different. And, you know, I would say too, uh, don't underestimate the importance of LinkedIn for search. If people are searching things, they're searching LinkedIn. So you want to think about what people are searching for on LinkedIn and make sure you're using those words so that you're coming up in those search results. If geography is important to your business, then make sure you're using the, the geographically where you are, where you're physically located. Um, if it's not, then don't use that, those things, but think about what, when somebody goes onto LinkedIn and you're like, that's my ideal person. I want to come up in that search. What are they typing in? And then make sure you're using all those words that, that takes your profile from like LinkedIn says I'm an all-star, which just means you filled in all the blanks to really starting to move towards profiting from the work that you're doing on LinkedIn. So Karen, we are, our industry, we're in the service industry. So we work with, you know, like consultants, we work with families. We're in this unique situation where we really have two clients. You know, most of the time it's the parents that are hiring us as um, independent education consultants. Some of us are already in schools or in a nonprofit organization. But so, you know, but the, still the parents are sending their children but our clients are really the students. So when we're putting our LinkedIn profile together, who, which audience should we address? I, you know, I think, so am I right when I say that the vast majority of the time the, the parents are footing the bill? Yes. So then that's who I would focus it on. Who's paying, who's writing the check, right? Okay. Because, because, and I, but here's the thing. I think that there's a way you can do both, right? You want to find where it intersects. Like you, because here, because I think that, many, many more students are using LinkedIn and they are seeing it. And hopefully colleges are starting to encourage that because if you graduate college as a student and you've got a robust LinkedIn network, LinkedIn network already, you've connected with your professors and the, your, your bosses, and you've got recommendations from your, you know, from your boss at the school newspaper, you're graduating with a, with a, or a, you're going to, you're going to be way ahead of all the graduates that haven't done that. So I do think the students are looking at it and you want to think a little bit about what their pain points are. They, they don't want to need you, but they do know that they need you, right? So you want to think a little bit about what, what would it be great? Imagine if, you know, this, you were on the other side of that, right? And so the student and the parent, parent can put themselves in, in that, you know what I mean? You can say, you know, so many students, I'm totally going to make this up, you guys. So it totally might be wrong, but you know, so many students get accepted to the college of their dreams and then they get in the door and they, they start it. And then, I mean, I can say I have four kids, every single one of them was quitting after the first semester, every single one of them. Right. So, you know, thankfully I was just like, yeah, no, you can quit after the second semester. And by then they didn't want to anymore, but you know, like put that in there because they're, they're experiencing those things, right. They're experiencing those challenges you've gotten there. This is your dream. And now you're like, holy crap. What do I do now? I'm so not prepared for this, right? So, so talk about those things. Don't be afraid to talk about those things because they want to see that, right? And they, they, they want to see that and then they're going to feel heard and supported and they're going to be like, yes, this is who I need to hire. Yeah, yeah, I think that's key. So 
when, what should we, how should we be using? So we have these different audiences. We can use LinkedIn to either, I mean, our ultimate goal is to find more clients, but maybe that's not the real direction we should be going with LinkedIn. Maybe to, to demonstrate our professional expertise or different things like that. So what are your thoughts yeah. in terms of- So I have, I, have a hierarchy. I, have a, I have a hierarchy of three different types of connections you wanna have on LinkedIn. Okay. And the top one really is who is it that has an audience full of people that, that they, they can get you in front of? Because not, nobody wants to be the person that people are, that is pitching all these people like, hey, I can help your kid. First of all, you don't even know on LinkedIn who's got a kid that might need help, right? So, so you want to find the other people in your industry and like look at like um, collaborations, type, partnership type things. I mean, Cindy heard me talk on another, from a, another one of my clients brought me in to that to an organization that Cindy, you know, became, you know, Cindy heard, Cindy became a client and introduced me here. Rather that one connection that I made and she, I think, heard from me from another talk that I did, but that one connection got me in front of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, right? So that's the, that is the best use of LinkedIn, right? Who do you know? Who do you know? Let's collaborate. Where's the opportunities for both of us? I'm going to skip the second one and come back to it. The third one really, the bottom one really is going straight for the clients. Um, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm not saying that there's not an opportunity for that, but I'm sure you're all getting LinkedIn spam from people saying, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Yep. There's never, ever a reason to do that. Okay. So there's lots of ways you can reach out to people in a warm way um, to avoid that. And I'm not, so I'm not going to say that to that, but that's the bottom. The middle one is where I think is what I think is really interesting. And that is publicity. Who are the journalists that write about education in your market? And are you connecting to them? Now, think about how much better this works if you have a great LinkedIn profile, right? But I have story after story after story about students that saw an article and, and like you saw an article that you loved. You don't have any idea who this person is, but you saw an article on NBC News that you love. So you share it on LinkedIn, you, you tag the journalist, the person that wrote the article and connect with them and said, love this article. So many people overlook what you talked about in paragraph four you know, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for doing this. I'm sharing it everywhere. Every journalist loves this, right? Every journalist loves this. So then the next thing is they, now they're, now they're connected to you because of course they're, they're thrilled that you're, you're sharing their content. They're very likely to accept your connection request. If your profile is speaking for you, the next time they need a source for a story, maybe they'll call you, right? So you want to build your network full of these people. And now we're talking about standing out from your competitors. If somebody's looking at multiple people and you've got as seen on NBC News on your profile, right? That is, and on your website and on all the important places. And you're dropping that art. Like when they ask you for a quote, what you're doing is you're including the PDF of the article where you were quoted in or the podcast you were heard on. I mean, that gives you the credibility to land the clients over your competition. So that middle piece, that connecting with journalists is something many people overlook, but is so, so powerful. So can you go back over number one? People are asking what yep. partnerships, one. partnerships. So who else has, who else has a, um, an audience of people? So who else talks to your students, the kinds of students you want? Um, you know, it could be, you know, I have a client that, um, did like SAT prep type stuff. And he was building relationships with nationwide karate um, studios because oh. nationwide karate studios tended to have a lot, they cared about the education of their, their kids, like karate, they're very education focused as well, right? Driving schools, right? He was obviously high, focused on high school, driving schools. They have audiences that he wants to get in front of, Right. So so he was connecting with the, the owners of these organizations and obviously the bigger, the better. Right. And saying, you know, here's the deal. I, I do this. You have an audience of that. I would love I would love to make you, you know, what, however, he's he had a lot of publicity, too, like he had podcasts and things like that. But, you know, those are the kinds of partnerships I can get. I'd love to interview you on my pod, podcast and maybe make you the preferred driving school for this for my blah, 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 right? So now anybody, so he then got his name in front of all of the, he, you know, they would, depending on everything's different, right? But would get in front of all of the students for the driving schools. And of course he didn't go for the one, I want, he worked with me, so he went for the bigger chains where they had 25 or 150 locations, right? And then, you know, the same with things like karate schools. So that's a sort of on the path to what you guys are doing, but not necessarily the same. 
think about who, think out of, I, what I liked about it was we were thinking outside of the box, not just other people that do kind of what you do. Who else serves the same people that you serve and build relationships with them? And you can literally say like, I love connecting with people that serve this type of student, you know, because I, you know, I, I, I love when my students, you know, the, the students that I work with that are, that are active in their, with their dojos and karate are always our best, our best learners. You can see I'm making this up, right? But you get where I'm going, right? Like, you, and that's how you connect with them. They're going to not going to say no, they're going to be happy to do that. It's going to be unexpected for them as well. And it's personalized. Well, I there think that makes questions. a lot of sense. Go ahead, Carmen. Okay. There is one big question of, do you recommend paying for the premium account? So uh, everything we've talked about here today and everything we will continue to talk about here today can all be done on the free account. That being said, the $80 a month I spend on LinkedIn Sales Navigator is without a doubt the best money I spend every month. It is, it is so, there's so much value to it. You know, like what I just talked about the, the karate studios, right? If you go into regular LinkedIn and you do a search for karate studios and owners, right? Maybe let's say a thousand come up. If you do that same search in Sales Navigator, you can take that same thousand people and drill deeper and say, okay, you know what? Now only show me karate studio owners that have been active on LinkedIn in the last 30 days, right? So now that takes it from a thousand to 400. That's 600 people you never have to even look at again or connect with. Right. So now you're focused on those 400 people, not the thousand people. And that saves you time. And anything that saves me time is worth me spending money on. So there's a lot of other reasons. Um, in fact, um, you guys, they mentioned earlier, I have a podcast called Good Girls Get Rich. If you Google that, I did a two part series on Sales Navigator probably a year and a half ago. So it's not new, but it's still relevant. So Google Good Girls Get Rich and Sales Navigator, and you should find those two episodes. And I'll dive deep into that topic. And I heard part of that and I'm, I've been a listener of the Good Girls Get Rich um, podcast for quite a while and it was very helpful. And I definitely, uh, you know, that's always the debate in our industry, especially as in a service industry. It's like, what should I, you know, everything's available for free. What should I do for free and what should I pay for? And um, I am of the opinion that resources that we have available that help us save time is worth our investment because right then it comes back to investing in yourself. You know, when you're investing in yourself, you're putting all this time into LinkedIn, your profile, then, you know, take it to the next step. So that leads me to my next question. What are some of the mistakes that you see in LinkedIn the most, Karen? Yeah. So I, hopefully she's not listening. I, my daughter just recently got a promotion into changed her LinkedIn profile. So I went into her profile to look at it and it said, I am a good at this. I, she must have said I 150 times in her about section. And I haven't approached it with her yet, but I was like, oh yeah, we got to change that. Like, again, it's all about her. And it makes sense because she thinks it's like her resume. I mean, I'm her mother for God's sake. Clearly she doesn't listen to my podcast. But she, but I saw that and I was like that, every sentence started with the word I. And she's, I mean, she did a really good job. This is not like, she is no, not a rookie at this, right? But, but that's what I talk about shifting the energy, right? She can say, Working with this company and and working with this type of clients um, helps is so helpful to you know it, it it lights me up when I do this 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 so you can tell the same story but take the focus off of you and put the focus on the person that you're looking to attract. By the way, the podcast is just you can go to goodgirlsgetrich.com and it'll okay. take you there. Goodgirlsgetrich.com with the podcast. Yeah, or go that. anywhere you listen to podcasts. It's there, but um, goodgirlsgetrich.com gets you to my website where the podcast is. Um, but that's one mistake is making it all about you. Make it, tell me about you, but make it about me. Um, not, you know, not taking advantage of the headline is another mistake. The headline will default to your most current experience title. So, you know, CEO, you know, uh, consultant, like nobody's, you, you want to hook people with that, right? That's back to the, you know, I'm a financial planner that helps women over 50 create enough wealth to retire at 60. Like hook people with that so you stand out. That headline's going to be seen um, when you, you know, when you come up in the searches. So you want to hook people with that headline. Um, but I guess the biggest one really is not Rick, not making people see themselves in your profile. You know, even if you tell me, like you really have to be very clear on who your ideal client is. So people say, she's talking to me, 
like, this is, this is meant for me. I need to check her out. Right. Like that is, you know, that is the, is probably the biggest mistake. It's all about you and not enough about who you're trying to attract. So how do you find out who that ideal client or audience is, Karen? Well, I mean, listen, I, the, the premise behind good girls get rich is when you do what you love, when you do what you're good at, that's when all the abundance comes into your life. So my advice is think about the most favorite client you've ever had and just build it around there, build it around there. You know, I mean, listen, you can say, you know, here's the deal. Like I, I, you can make, you can, you can decide you don't want to work with, you know, men or women or kids or whatever, you know what I mean? People from the South, people from the North, people from New York, whatever, right? You can decide that. So you can speak to exactly to the people you want to attract and just, you know, think about who lights you up when, they, when you see their name on your calendar and build it all around that person. Because that's when you're enjoying what you're doing, you're, more of it's going to come to you. When you look at your calendar and you see somebody on there, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm glad that's at four o'clock because I'm going to need a glass of wine after that call. Like, you don't want that, right? Because that's just going to drag you down. You want more of the people you love. So I would say, if you don't know who it is, that's where I would start. Build it around the most, the best clients you've ever had. I think that's great advice. And for those of you watching and listening, um, this is what Gina Lester and I, we just offered a two day workshop. We just finished this week on branding and marketing. And that was one of the things we talked about is finding your perfect client and, you know, building that avatar. Um, we have to build too, though, because we have to build it for the students and we have to build it for the parents because we are in that dichotomy of, well, who really, you know, we work with the students, but the parents are paying us for the most part, not, not hundred percent, but for the most part, the parents are paying and the students, you know, and they're the ones that find us. So, so we really have two avatars that we have to look at. So um, what other advice would you have for entrepreneurs? We're all entrepreneurs you know, for the most part, although, as I said, we do have, you know, if you're with the school or a nonprofit organization, you're still an entrepreneur, you're still marketing, you're still looking for people yep. to talk to. So what are there some other yeah. tips that you have? Well, you know, I'm going to just kind of tap onto what you were just talking about, your, about your ideal client. I would say too, once you identify your ideal client, where you want to focus isn't on your products and services. It's on the transformation that happens when you're in their world, right? So instead of on your about section saying, and I'm going to help you I'm going to raise your SAT score. Nobody, like, I, if you work with me, you're so sick of hearing this. I'm like, so that what? So that what? So that what? You know, I help them with their SAT scores. So that what? Well, so they get into it. They have their bigger choices of college. So that what? Well, so that they're happy when they get there. So that what? Well, so that they actually graduate from college. So that what? So that they can stop sleeping in my living room. So that I can, so that what? So I can stop paying their easy pass bill. Like, get to the heart of the transformation. What we want is successful children, right? Not great SAT scores. So, so get to the heart of that when you're creating all of this, because that's what we want, right? We don't, you know, like just keep going, keep going, keep going to get to the heart of what people are truly investing in. They're not in, like this. The analogy is um, people don't buy socks. They buy warm feet, right? So think about the warm feet in your business. And that's really what you want to be showcasing. What, what is the transformation that people experience when you are in their life? Okay, so that's, you know, that's kind of the, the biggest tip I would say. And the other thing too is like everything we've talked about here today is so much easier when you have a great profile, right? If you don't have a great profile, you're, you know, imagine if you like meet somebody at a networking event and get their business card, because we're doing that now, we're networking events again, right? You get their business card and, you know, um, I have my LinkedIn URL on it automatically invites them to connect with me, right? I want them to look at that and go, wow, I need to connect with her. I need to, I need to talk to her. She looks like she's doing some cool stuff, right? That's what you want for you. You want people to be blown away when they see it and want to know more about you without expectation. You don't know where those conversations would go. It could be a used car dealership. It could be, you know, but you never know because maybe their brother is blah, 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 right? So without ex network, without expectation on LinkedIn and just encourage conversations, encourage opportunities to chat and meet people. And, you know, you can just meet the coolest people, um, you know, and there's no gatekeeper anymore. Remember the, you guys, anybody here old enough to remember what a gatekeeper is? You had to get past the gatekeeper. You had to get past the receptionist who got you to the, you know, wherever you had to get past their sector. You can go right to the people you want to meet. In fact, I suggest you go above them. 
so that they're like, that's a great idea. Reach out to Mary and tell her I send you, right? <laughs> like, Who doesn't want that, right? So, so they, you know, think big, think big when you're doing this. Like think, like I said, I don't want you to go after the individual dojo, go for the nationwide things. Like look for the biggest opportunities because somebody's getting that business. Why not you, right? Like, why not you? There is a question if you've heard of Alingible. Um, that's like a LinkedIn. Oh, alignable. Oh, sorry. Alignable. Yeah, yeah. Is it worth time and money? I, I, I mean, I'm going to say no, but I'm, I'm going to say no and preface it with, I've, I've tr- I logged on once. I tried it once. It annoyed me. I disconnected and haven't gone back to it. Um, I don't think we, I don't think we need it. I think that everybody understands LinkedIn is where business happens. Um, I'm not sure why we need another one, but Again, I'm saying that from a position of, not really from a position of strength. I don't really know. I tried it, I didn't like it, and I disconnected it. Well, that's a good question because I keep getting these links all the time that say, oh, I want to connect with you on Alignable. And I I just wasn't really willing to pick up a whole nother one. And so that's interesting to hear. Um, so you had said there were three levels and we were going to come back to number two. So well, let's go back the publicity. to that. Number two was the publicity. So the top level is partnerships. Second level is journalists. Who are the journalists that write about what you do? And then the third level is absolutely look for people that can buy your products and services. So the journalist is the middle level. Oh yeah. And that's the one I think that like, I didn't know that makes total sense, but um, I never would have occurred to me that that could have been way to connect. it It is so easy. It is so easy. I mean, I would love to sit here and tell you that, you know, it's like fishing in a barrel. I would love to sit here and tell you that like I have these secrets that nobody else has. It's like fishing in a barrel. There's so many easy ways to get, you know, I mean, I have a, I have a client that's currently in our program and she saw a media opportunity. She reached out to the thing and she, you know, told them what she, how she could support it. And then she went to LinkedIn. She has a great LinkedIn profile and connected with them. And said, you know, I just responded to your media request over here. And the woman said, wow, I love your profile. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to use you in the article. But I really want, let's get a time to talk because I think there's other opportunities for us. Oh, wow. Right. It, when, when you do the work on having that great profile, these other opportunities just happen. They just happen. And, you know, it's, you know, one other thing that I think is important. There's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different strategies around LinkedIn. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna not gonna say there's there's definitely not one right way. There's probably a few wrong ways, but there's definitely not one right way. But my way, it really is very micro-targeted. I don't want you to ever connect with 100 people a day. I don't want you to connect with 100 people a week or a month. I, you know, it's not, it's not a numbers game. I want you to be intentional about who you connect with and proactive, because if you're just reactive, you're not gonna ever have any results, right? So be proactive, connect with five people a week. Five people a week, that's it. But with the intention that you're going to get on the phone with all five of them at some point in the next few weeks, right? You're not connecting with people like you're connecting with them on Twitter or Instagram. You actually want to get up. These are relationships you want to build. So who are people that you'd truly like to get on the phone with or on Zoom with, right? And and be intentional about that. But then the other side of it is also remember that you probably already have a network full of some pretty cool people poke through that existing network and see, find five people a week there that you can connect with and say, hey, you know, Sydney, we met at that conference three years ago. And when at the time I was working for here, now I'm doing this, I would love to catch up and hear what you've been up to, right? If you're doing that five times a week and reaching out to five customers a week, you're probably not gonna have time to keep up. So that's why I want it to be very micro-targeted, but really looking for the bigger opportunities you will have calls on your calendar. And again, as long as you go into those calls, I'm not sure exactly where they're going. Um, you know, you, you, you'll find the opportunities and maybe you're making a friend. I mean, I'm not looking for you to make new friends. You can find other ways to make new friends, but if that's the worst thing that happens, it's not the end of the world. Right. 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 That's, that's very true. Um, <clears throat> well, and I, so how does, how do you use LinkedIn to connect to others? So if you're making these calls and you're, you're, you've updated your profile, then do you leverage LinkedIn by itself or do you leverage connected to other social media? I, you know, I was just telling somebody yesterday, if I disconnected all of my other social media accounts, I don't think my business would even notice. Um, and I have a lot of social media followers, but I, 
I, you know, so there's two parts to this. Let's just take an event, for example, like a conference, okay? Um, well, let's use this event, for example. Um, I, there was, I don't do, there was 180 people you said registered for this. Mm -hmm. I did not get one LinkedIn connection request that said, hey, Karen, I'm looking forward to hearing your talk next week, um, you know, at the name of this organization, you know, the name of this thing at the Leverage Link LinkedIn. I'm not calling you out for that. Nobody yeah. does, right? But yeah, think about the events. Yeah, because I linked it. I was think too about, Yeah, hang on one second. I'm going to show you. I actually have, oh, I can't find it. I actually have, back in the day when we weren't out going out to place, I actually have Dunkin' Donut gift cards that I show up with at events and I give them out to the people that have connected with me ahead of time. I am not going to go broke giving out Dunkin' Donut gift cards. But think about that. You wouldn't be going to these events, these conferences, if they didn't have people that you were interested in connecting with. If you have a great profile and you connect with people ahead of time and saying, hey, Karen, I see you're, I see you're listed at this conference. I'd love, I'm really looking forward to hearing your talk. Right now, again, I teach LinkedIn and people don't do this. So people that don't teach LinkedIn, this is never happening to, right? So they're going to remember you after the conference when you go up to them and say, hey, that was great. It was as good as I thought. In fact, I, I took pictures and I tweeted about it. And, you know, like tell them that, right? You're, these are, the, you wouldn't be going, these are probably the most influential people at the conference, right? Is the speakers. But then here's the deal. Then on the other side of it, using LinkedIn, you know, I have, a, I have somebody that's in my, my program right now. And she's like, oh, I just went to my first networking event in a year and a half. And she's like, and she's in my program. And she's like, and I followed up with everybody afterwards on email. I was like, why did you follow up on email? She's like, I said, everybody's email, like a lot of people's email is like the black hole. You have a kick-ass LinkedIn profile. Connect with them on LinkedIn afterwards. They're going to be like, wow, you're going to wow them. And you're going to stay out of their inbox. They're going to learn more about you than they learned just from that email. Because now they're going to learn about all the other things that you shared, right, in your profile. And it's a much better way to follow up with people after the conference. As a matter of fact, when I do um, when I do any networking, <clears throat> I I am not 100 percent good at this, but I try to be 100 percent good at blocking an hour the day after for this work to connect with the people I met at the conference on LinkedIn. So many people go to all these networking events and then don't do any follow up. Go to half as many networking events and do twice as much follow up, and you're going to have twice as much money in the bank. You know, so, so you LinkedIn, if, again, if you have a great protocol is a great hub for that. Oh, I, I, that's the, that resounds so much. And I understand, you know, I'm just as guilty as everybody else. And in terms of the follow-up and that kind of thing, um, handing, but I love that idea of, of reaching out ahead of time and then um, providing that kind of incentive afterwards, like, thanks for doing this. You know, I would give Starbucks cards. I've done that. And, and it's right, the LinkedIn really recommendations that mm -hmm. certainly is going to make you stand out. Like if you see a great speaker or a great talk, or even just get a great freebie from somebody. In fact, if you need to practice and you like this, feel free to write me a LinkedIn recommendation and uh, let everybody know that, right? Um, see how easy that was. You can do the same thing. <laughs> So I'm seeing comments about people are finding that their first contacts come from moms seeing them on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, you know, connecting from Facebook, that might be where a lot of our clients are. And then moving I, over to LinkedIn, maybe you put your LinkedIn, um, a link to your profile on your Facebook page so they can go check you out on LinkedIn. What are your thoughts on yeah, that? Well, listen, I 100% think that if that's where you're getting business from, you should keep doing it. Right. But here's the thing. What if you, what if you're doing some of this work, right. That we talked about and you're connecting with journalists and you get featured on literally, I say NBC news because I've had clients that got featured within a week on NBC news.com. And then you go back over to Facebook and you post it there where the moms that are looking for this kind of thing, now see that added credibility about you, right? So that's why I love, like I, you know, visibility is a whole lot of fun, but it doesn't by itself, doesn't really put any money in the bank, but using it for credibility to land the bigger contracts, to get those things that it also will tell the people on Facebook that you are interviewable, right? Like if you've been on a podcast, there's a gazillion podcasts, find out podcasts that you think you'd be a great guest for and connect with the host. I, I would love people that listen to my podcast to share it out on social media and tag me in it, right? I say it on every single show. Do that to the podcast host. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make you show up. It'll, it'll let people know, right, who you are. And again, your LinkedIn profile helps with that. So when you're, you can use LinkedIn 
to, do, to build those relationships and then bring that media back to Facebook to give you the credibility so the moms that see you there will, will have even more credibility to hire you. On your LinkedIn page, after your name, it says helping women entrepreneurs, et cetera. Is that that's, a that's the headline that I was talking about earlier. Okay. That will default to your most current experience if you don't um, change it. There's yeah. also a question in the um, question and answer. What's the best way to, to have someone who knows what they are doing to review your profile and LinkedIn pages? Who do we turn to? Cost of consultations. I mean... Me, right? Why, who did you think I was going to say? Um, <laughs> connect with me on LinkedIn. First of all, if you connect with me on LinkedIn, um, let me know that we met here. And if you want me to look at your profile, ask me that in the connection request, because I don't just randomly give feedback to people um, unless they ask me for it, right? So, so ask me, and I'm happy to give you feedback on your profile. But if you're looking for support and for help and to learn how to do more with this, you know, I'm happy to, to have a phone conversation with you. In fact, um, you know, I'm happy to just, if you can get to my calendar by karenyankovich.com slash call. So just, you can get to my calendar. I'm happy to have a call with you to talk about what it looks like to get some professional help. But if you just want, you know, what do you think of my profile? Just let me know that in, uh, in a LinkedIn connection request. Um, and uh, by the way, anybody that's watching this on the replay, that's, this still goes. So um Happy to support you guys wherever I can beyond this. The well, link will, calendar's in the chat now. Oh, super. Thanks, Carmen. And I will, um, you know, add my uh, recommendations for that too, because Karen, you and I started this journey a year ago and right after my husband passed away and I was like, now I'm on my own. I don't know what I'm going to do. I need some help and guidance. And, you know, a lot of things have transpired and I haven't finished it the way so what everybody's seeing on my LinkedIn page is not I haven't even started it yet Karen has been very patient with me and I've got all the information uh, we've been working on that but so my my point is is I want everybody to watch the transformation you can see what it is now and you're going to see what it's going to look like over the next few months as uh, because um, Karen and her team are going to be helping me and she has a dynamite team. They know what they're doing and they can make such a difference. And I'm really looking forward to moving from point A to point B to point C, you know, setting those goals. You have goals for your business, right? And I like to go back to what you said, Karen, about transformation, because this is one of the things that I talk about a lot as a, as a business coach and as a coach for consultants is we always do focus on, well, I will help you with the essays. I will do this. You know, here's a list of all the things that I'm going to do. And this is a thing that I've taught in technology as well. We talk about all the features, which is there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not what's going to move people to enroll your services or, you know, buy a product. It's what is it going to do for them? So focusing on that transformation, that is the hard part. It's easy for us to say, I write us, you know, I not write essays. I help you review your essays. We help you do test prep. We help you pick your colleges, whatever it is that we do. That's the easy part, but finding and identifying that transformation that's the part where it takes us some work to be able to, to drill down to that. So, um, and, and to communicate that through our profile. So um, Jeannie's asking what the key components of a LinkedIn profile is, you know, and yeah. is it best to be brief? So, so it's not best to be brief. And the reason for that is search and search engine optimization or search social media optimization. You want it. so so everybody here on your LinkedIn profile. If you you'll see there's a dashboard, okay. And on that, I'm going to talk you through this. So if you want to do it while I'm talking, can we pull one up? Should we pull yours up? Sure, sure. Can I? Can you give me? Do I have ability to? I'll oh, be yeah. able to share your screen. Hang on one second. I gotta. I have a couple of screens here. I gotta prep for this. Give me one second. Um. All righty. Think, can you guys see my screen now? You see my profile? Yep. Yes. Okay. okay. So everybody, so this is, so I do have premium, but this, everybody has this. Everybody has this dashboard. And you'll see here that um, in the past week, I've had 622 views of my profile, 59 posts used today for a post. And then 
this is the number that's interesting, 324 times that come up in search appearances. This is in this week. This is actually a pretty low number because it's summer. Usually it's well over like five, seven, five, six hundred. But you can click on this number and you can see who, where do my searchers work, right? What do my searchers do? And this is good. If my searchers came up and there were things like engineers or things like that, that probably isn't a good fit. I, I, something's wrong, right? But down here, the keywords my searchers use. Now this changes every week. I never know when I do this live, what's going to be here. But business strategist, strategist, and speaker. Strategy and speaking are the two things I like to do the most. So the fact that that's coming up when people are searching for a speaker or a strategist, that I'm, they're bringing my profile up, that's a beautiful thing. So you want to look at this. I will caution you and say that if this number is low, if it's like under 100, it may be that um, you're not coming up in, the, in enough searches. So you won't have all that. There's not enough search juice to give you the keywords. But I'm showing you this because coming up, like, like let's just say you were paying for advertising. Maybe you pay for Google AdWords or Facebook ads, right? You're paying to put your content in front of people that you hope are interested in what you do, right? You take some time to do this and you're putting your profile in front of people you know are interested in what you do because they're searching for it, right? So taking the time to do a, a great profile and infusing a lot of keywords is not a premium feature. Everyone has this. The only, if you don't have the keywords, it's because you're not coming up in enough searches yet. And when you, when you are more active on LinkedIn and you really deep, you know, deepen into your profile, um, you'll start to come up in more searches and then that those, those words will start to populate for you. Um, but you know, you want to do this because I mean, that's like, even at the 300 number, that's 1200 times a month. If somebody said to me, I can send 1500 people to your website every month. Are you interested? I'd be like, sign me up. Right. So this is 1500 people a month. And this is a slow month for, you know, that come to there. So, 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 so the reason, so, so therefore, so I'm going to go back to the beginning of your question and then I'll, you know, which was, what are the key points, right? You want to make sure you do your headline because that's what people are going to see. You want to make sure you're doing your about section and you have 2,600 characters there. Feel free to model mine. I have, you can see at the end of mine, I list all my specialties. Those are my keywords, right? It just gives me another place to put them and it feels good. It doesn't feel like I'm shoving them where they don't belong just to have them there again, right? Um, Here's the beautiful thing about that. My, when I do this, I'm not really, if somebody's looking for a LinkedIn speaker, everybody that teaches LinkedIn knows how to do this. This doesn't really work for me all that well. You don't have that same problem. Your competitors don't know how to do this. You do now, right? So you are gonna come up when they're looking for what you do in the, in the area that you do it, right? So, so taking the time to do this and your about section is a great way because it's juicy, 2,600 characters. Use a lot of, like I heard Cindy talk about essays. Use a lot of white space, make it easy to read. You know what I mean? Make it a narrative, not, you know, make it, make sure it's something interesting. I often say like, take your phone, talk into it, record it and, um, you know, get it transcribed and just say like, I'm so passionate about what I do. I love when I see my students that accepted into their college of their first choice or like, like talk into it, like give me your heart. And it's obviously going to be in your voice because you're, you're talking it, right? It's so easy to get into like, corporate speak when you're typing it. So talk it, transcribe it, edit it a little bit, make it look pretty, infuse some keywords and don't overthink it. I know you guys are teachers. Don't overthink it. Let <laughs> it go. Okay. Cause, cause people want to hear your voice. And then the other, the third section I would say that I absolutely want you to touch on is the very first, it, the, well, it's the place where you're, where you want the business from, right? I want you to build out your entire experience section. Cause somebody might remember you from a job you did, you know, 10, 20 years ago. So I want you to have all that. I want you to have the whole profile filled out. And if you just do those three things, that's going to be, it's going to move you very fast in the right direction. Um, from there, just make sure every week you're doing two things, connecting with five people a week that you don't know and reaching out to five people a week that are within your network. And those five people you don't know can be conferences you're speaking at, that you're, that you're going to. It could be journalists that you love. It could be people you meet at a networking event. It's not hard to find five people. I don't want it to be cold. I want it to be warm, as warm as maybe it's, we're both members of the Chamber of Commerce, right? Like whatever, make it as warm as you can. If you're doing those two things every week and then just staying on top of your messages, I think you're gonna be like calling me in a couple months and saying, how do I buy you a Dunkin' Donuts gift card? I love it. Keyword ideas for IECs. 
You know, I, I don't, I couldn't really answer that, at least not without diving deeper. But what I would say is ask some of the people that you work with now, if I close up shop today and you were going on a LinkedIn to find somebody new, what would you search for? You know, um, ask a couple people those questions. You know what, go down the, I mean, I don't know how many people do a good job at this in your industry. I, I'm not saying they do or don't. Go down the rabbit hole a little bit. Find some other people in your industry that are doing it and see how they're describing themselves. And maybe you'll think of things that you didn't think of before. I mean, certainly I don't want you to copy things, but you can model, you can model things and that's, you know, perfectly okay. So I would, but the best way is really to ask people, what would, if I closed up shop, what would you search for to find another person to do this for you? Yeah, talk which to should, the parents and students. Which would be a priority, optimizing LinkedIn or creating a website? You know what? I mean, I know this is going to just sound like, of course she says that, but I think optimizing LinkedIn. I just had a conversation with someone this morning about this. If you're starting a new business, what you need is clients and LinkedIn building and clients come from people right? They come from people. They, if you think that you're going to get the SEO on your website, that's going to, people are just going to magically find you and hire you. You'll find out soon enough that that is somebody's fantasy. You know, it does happen on occasion, but I'm not, I'm not at the cross your fingers and hope that business happens type. I know that if you create a great LinkedIn profile and then you start building a network from there that you can get business and you can get the, and you can get the bigger ticket opportunities by having conversation with people. So I say, go to LinkedIn, land a couple clients and then pay someone to your website. Should we have a business LinkedIn account or just use a personal LinkedIn account? So, so both, but so thinking about like your Facebook personal page your Facebook business page, LinkedIn is similar. The difference is the vast majority of the work on LinkedIn is done from your personal page. And nobody on LinkedIn is saying, don't talk business on your personal page because that's all LinkedIn is for. So your person, so LinkedIn, it, it, you know, people ask me too, even like, what should I post about and how do I get more views? Honestly, that's the wrong question, right? It, the right question is who can I meet? Who do I need to meet that's going to take my business to the next level? Who's the person that's going to help me do that? And then finding those people. Yeah, we can talk about posting and things like that, but, and it's not irrelevant, but it's not anywhere near as relevant as meeting people. So if you build a great profile and I mean, unless you, you know, I mean, even college students, even Carmen has experience, right? She can talk about the work she's doing here on her LinkedIn profile, right? To position her to get another job. So if you do a great job of really diving into what, what you've done, it doesn't, it, the, the, section, the, the section about your jobs does not say job, it says experience. So if you wrote the, if you were the editor of your school newspaper or you were the secretary, the president of the PTA or you're on the board of directors somewhere, that's experience and it shows that people had confidence in you. So put that stuff in there and, um, and then just really rock it and then build some relationships. And I'm telling you, you can get some clients fast and that, and then you make some money to do all the things you don't want to do. Um, flip the funnel is kind of my theory. Stop with the $5 and the $25 and the hundred dollar things, go straight for the thousand dollar, 5,000 and $10,000 things. And I promise you they're there for you on LinkedIn. And that's one of the things I think that you have taught me over the last year is, yeah, you know, to look for that high ticket item and that high ticket opportunity. And as you said, you know, don't just go for the, the one or two, you know, go for the whole chain or something like that. And I think that's, um, it reminds me of the movie Pursuit of Happiness and how the main um, character you know everybody else started at the bottom and he just started going directly to top because he didn't have time to okay, well, that's exactly, and who who cares what what's the worst thing that happened they say no so exactly. go to the next one, right exactly. like somebody's gonna say yes especially if you do the work to show that you're worth their time and that's why i know i'm harping on you with the profile but here's the other thing and again a little bit self-serving because you know i'd love to help you with this but it's hard to write your own linkedin profile i don't care how good of a writer you are in fact, the better, the better writer you are, the less I like to work with you because you're going to keep telling me what I, how to do. Like I have one client right now that we're working with that she, she tortured our profile writer too. And she kept saying, no, I want to say this. I want to say, I took one look at it and I went, who's reading this? This is boring. Like I want to hear the inciting. I want to hear the good stuff, the fun stuff. Tell me the good stuff, you know, but she felt like she had all these rules about what it should be. Um, you don't, there's no rules. There's no LinkedIn police. So take some time, have a great profile, even if you partner with other people um, to do it, you know, or get yourself on my calendar. And I'm happy to talk to you about what it looks like to get some help. So, yeah. And so we are like totally out of time. And I'm sure we could spend another 40 minutes talking about this, but 
Carmen, can you put um, her Karen's contact? So tell, so what do you invite people to do, Karen? Well, first of all, connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you want some feedback on your profile, just let me know and I will, I will do it. Honestly, depending on how much of that there is, I'll get to you eventually. You know, um, I don't have a lot else. I don't have, sometimes if I have a lot of this stuff happening in, the, in, the, in a week, it takes me longer, but this, this is pretty self-contained right now. So I think I, I think I should be able to get back to you quickly. Um, and then, you know, if, if you want to know what it looks like to get some help, look, get on my calendar. I'm happy to, those are an hour long call, by the way. So we're not, I'm not selling you for an hour. I, we're really, truly helping you get to the bottom is I don't want to work with people that I don't think are going to have great success on LinkedIn. So we really spend some time talking about what's, what, you know, what your goals are, how big your goals are. And, you know, do we think that LinkedIn is going to be able to help you? And do we think that I'm a good fit? To help you to get, help you get there. So we spend a lot of time, you know, just kind of uncovering what's going on in your business, um, because I truly am pretty picky. Because I want people that are going to want to do the work, and that are, you know, that are um, excited about it. So, so it's, those calls are an hour long. You get a lot of value from those calls. Well, and I can't right now. By the way, if you're watching this on the replay, you might not get me. But right now, my. Um, I have, a, I have another person that does some of these calls and she's on vacation for a couple of weeks. So now, now all calls go to me. If you want to call, this is the time to book it. Okay. Yeah. And I will say that, you know, I remember that call that you and I had and it's, it, I will testify that it, that's exactly, it was like, what are your goals? Where do you want to be? What are you, where are you at? What do you need to go? How can, you know, will this help you? Um, I was able to ask questions and you were very reassuring and, and just very inspirational. So thank you so much, Karen. Well, I, well thank you for the nice words. I remember that conversation too. And I, and I will tell you that one of the reasons why I love working with you or I love that conversation is it, it's not always easy to get some, the kind of support you need to get from your business, from the people around you. Not that they don't love you and want you to succeed, but they don't get it. So when I see somebody like Cindy that was in a situation where she was, you know, needed support not just to get this, but she needed the support. That's our sweet spot. We have amazing people in our group, in our, on our team that, that really are so supportive. And that's what we want to do. We want, you know, we want you. I had a, I had a client yesterday that just enrolled in a, in a higher package that we have. And I, she was telling me about her boyfriend, her daughter's boyfriend's father, who's got all this money. I said, here's what we're going to do. So in six months, we want your daughter's boyfriend to be going, I don't know what her mother does. But man, is she doing well? You know, I want to flip that. So that's what we want for everyone that we work with. Um, we want you to just be massively successful. And I think, you know, one thing about that too, as in our industry, I think, especially now with the pandemic and everything, we're, we're at a crux. We're at a, a pivoting point where we can, we have to, if we think outside the box, um, I think a lot of times we've put our own limits on ourselves and now we're at a point where we can expand and break out of those spots. And I, and I see what you have to offer is something that can help us, you know, do that. So, well, and I'm happy to help. So, um, I look, I'm so glad to have been, thank you so much for having me here, Cindy. And you guys, I'm looking forward to seeing, learning more about you on LinkedIn with your, and don't, don't think you need to mess with it before you reach out to me too. It's like cleaning for the cleaning lady. I got you. Nobody comes to me with a perfect LinkedIn profile. So I will, I will give you some good feedback. Yeah. Yep. I testify to that too. So thank you. Um, everybody, we are going to be back here next Friday. I also have another special guest. Aviva Leggett is going to um, be our guest for next Friday. And she's just published a book. It comes, it just came out on Tuesday, um, get real and get in. So we're going to talk about how students can, present their authentic selves and how that can help them in the college planning process. So watch for more information. I have a link on my website where you can start registering right now. And I'm definitely going to put this all on my LinkedIn. So, yeah, so all right. hopefully you're inspired now to reach back out to us and get that done. I will. I will. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Great. Carmen. Thank you so much for having Great me. Week. I'll see you guys back next Friday.